Hello everyone. Welcome into this Twin Flame reading. We have a pair here who seem to be running parallel in their life lessons. We will look into their past, present, and future to see how this connection is going to pan out. Let's dig in to see where this goes. <music> Hello everyone, welcome in. This is a Sacred Unions reading. A twin flame, soulmate, whichever it is that you subscribe to. Soul bond reading. Haven't done one of these in a very long time and I'm choosing to play with the format a bit. Remember this deck? If you've been watching me from the beginning, you remember this one. The Divine Circus Oracle from Alana Fairchild. Um, I've been eyeing it lately ever since doing... Um, the uh, YouTube, my first YouTube short yesterday <laughs> that then branched out to a mini reading on TikTok for the 777 portal. Um, I feel called to use this for the Sacred Union reading because there's a light side and a dark side to the elements in this particular deck. And if that doesn't embody the Twin Flame journey, I don't know what does, guys. <laughs> so we're going to do some past, present, future Kind of energy here with these cards and then we'll get into tarot for both sides of the feminine and the masculine in this reading and see what we get okay oh just one cut please thank you okay past the proud parrots number 33 raw rare raw and real is present future her wicked ways okay if you guys remember i'm not a fan of that card at all <laughs> not at all okay this seems like quite the transformation from past to present from present to future there's there's quite the opposition there let me just put that right there for a second let me go back for the proud pirate because it has been a while since i've used these cards so i want to make sure that i have these right and i love what she writes for her cards it says, if you are proud of who you are and everything you have learned in your life, free from shame, guilt, or judgment, what would you choose for yourself today? Okay. Rare, raw, and real. There is a unique beauty in you that wants to shine through. It is different. It might not be pretty, neat, or tidy. Yep. Transformation from here to here. And you might even feel vulnerable about sharing this real unveiled you to the world. Do it anyway, because the world wants to love you. The rare, raw, and real you. What this is, from being called to no longer be conform, conforming to others, making yourself smaller, to shedding that so the world can see the real you. So you can see the real you. So you can properly value the real you. Then you're met with the test. And it's not just one of you. This is both of you. Because both of you have similar parallel lessons, right? When Twin Flame, you mirror that kind of stuff. But I'm just not a fan of her. <laughs> and you'll see why. It says, you are meant to shine bright, to be a sun, even in the cold, dark depths of winter, bringing warmth to the world. Some don't like the light. They want to freeze your enthusiasm douse your creative fire and rain on your parade. Don't let them. Shine your light with stubbornness and happiness. Defeat the Snow Queen and her wicked ways. Can the Snow Queen be an actual person? Yes. Can it be figurative versus literal? Also yes. Oftentimes in readings when I've used this deck, most of the time it is a person. Okay, but do you see this transformation? This is the part to really, especially if this is you. If you made it from this step to this step, you need to celebrate yourself. This is freaking huge. This is, this is the process of waking up from the matrix. Okay, shedding all of everybody else's programming that was downloaded into you, especially as a child growing up, parents, family, teachers, friends, whatever. There's something here that was so significantly shed, and they're both six numbers. This is a 10 going back down to a 1. This is now, this is going to be the test in the future. Did you not just shed enough 
of what isn't yours, but did you also implement proper protection to guard against anyone? That's the test for this particular connection. Okay. I'm going to do the masculine on this side and the feminine on this side. Let's start with him. Let's see. Whoops. Okay. Start with the proud pyramid in the past, please. Empress, card of Taurus and Libra, Hermit, card of Virgo, Ten of Swords. Ooh, did they screw up in the past? <laughs> I guess that's what that's showing me. That's what that's showing me. Show me the present. Five of Wands, Two of Cups, Knight of Wands, okay. And the Her Wicked Ways, the future. Devil. King of Knight of Cups. Knight of Coins. Ah, okay. Okay. Let's get her side out. And then we'll we'll read it like a story. Okay. So far this is better than I thought it would. <laughs> okay. Pass with the proud pirate, please. Okay. So this is for a sacred union where the two of you actually have met once before. This isn't any of those who've never met. Okay. Three of wands. Four of coins. Six of swords. Okay. Rare, raw, and real in the present. Show me. Six of coins. Queen of Swords, Two of Swords, that one wants to come out. Judgment, okay. The future, her wicked ways. King of Swords, Leo Energy, Empress, Card of Taurus and Libra, Nine of Cups. It's been a long process, hasn't it? Okay. Okay. Story time. Okay. In the past... The previous version of ourselves that's overly programmed there's a big difference there's a huge contrast here from the masculine to the feminine okay um, because what it's showing me on the masculine side is the need of greater help from spirit from guides from the universe from God in order to make the transition from the old to the authentic okay and in this transition was the loss of the feminine Okay, there, there had to be a significant loss to kind of shake the foundation of the masculine. Did it hurt? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, it hurt. Ooh, I don't think anything hurts worse than the Ten of Swords. <laughs> Three of Swords, yeah, sure. Ten of Swords is ow. Her, on the other hand, she was able to, it's almost like she was closer to the threshold of change than he was at this time. Okay, at this time, because she's driving, she's the driving force in her own life. There's not a lot of universe stepping in to nudge things along. She's um, self-starting here. She's taking initiative. Um, there's sure the hesitation of moving on from this. Okay, um, there's a little bit of fear of looking out into the world and not knowing what to look for now after meeting a sacred union like this. A sacred connection like this, whether soulmate, twin flame, whatever it is you're prescribing to, but still understanding that it needs to be left. Still understanding that it's need to be left. I'm not saying that she didn't hesitate. I'm not saying that she didn't hold up her energy at all, because she did. She did. But she chose to take herself out of it versus the universe pushing him out of it. Do you see the difference? Okay. So in in this it's the same lesson but delivered differently in order for each person to learn however it is they're going to learn or oppose learning which we have some of that with him okay 
which is no surprise. <laughs> no surprise at all. So in the process, let's go into the present here. Okay. The rare, raw, real. I love that card. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, and notice that this is like these sixes, this is fixing feminine energy. So if there's a masculine has resistance in fixing his feminine energy, that's a foundational thing. That's a foundational thing, especially in today's world when um, a lot of patriarchal views are still kind of embedded in our lives, no matter how much they're circling the drain now, um, where men kind of default to the whole um, anything expressed as feminine makes them feminine, a.k.a. weak kind of thing. That could be part of the struggle. That could be part of the struggle because this is showing up as an immaturity to embrace a two of cups. Okay. Even after losing her. Okay. There's something in here because this two of cups isn't even just symbolizing uh, sacred connection here. There's something here where there's a soul divide in this particular masculine. Okay. One of these owls is the higher self trying to integrate in this masculine. But he has free will. So he's free to struggle or oppose as much as he wants. And that's only to his detriment. Right? Because it's <laughs> it's not like it's hurting anybody else but himself. Okay. The resistance to embrace that integration to be who he really is is incredibly strong. That he could run from it. He could flat out run from it. Okay. Her, on the other hand, okay, she's gotten decisive when it comes to partnership. She has gotten, she could have went the other way a little bit. <laughs> um, careful for the feminine, if you're watching, of getting too rigid to the point of cold in, um, in your boundaries. Okay. Let me let me give you an idea here. Think of your heart as a castle. Okay. And there's the wall around the castle, right? Um, that's those that's that's the first boundary. But the castle itself is also a boundary. Not everybody's allowed in, even if they're allowed past the wall, right? So if you allow them past the wall, someone past the wall, so they could look around. It doesn't mean they get access to everything, but they could look around, right? They still don't have access entry point to the castle itself. They can still be rejected at that door. Do you see what I'm saying? So you can still have your boundaries in place, but not be, yeah, that's still coming like rigid or cold about it. She seems like she's more inclined to get out and date, but she might make herself miserable of going far the other direction in in the coldness of declaring her boundaries you can be your wonderful self and still have those boundaries there's going to be something here that's a defining moment where the universe kind of opens it up to her to see hey you don't have to fully be this way you could still remain in your softness and still implement the boundaries. Okay. So learning, learning, she's more actively recalibrating. Okay. He is more having a fight with himself, with his guides, with the universe. Hers is a period of adjustments that she's making. So there's a, there's a little bit more smooth sailing on her side here. There's a bit more of the fight. Okay, uh, here for him. And this is on the precipice of running because we, we know with the twin flame dynamic, there's there's also the runner chaser dynamic. Um, she's not chasing, but he's running from himself. He's not running from her, he's running from himself because there doesn't feel like there's any connection here. This feels like this was a split. She headed in her direction he remained in his or headed in his and but they're still having to learn the same lessons the twin flame experience 
is an alchemical process for the soul. If you've studied alchemy at all, it's when you take something and you separate it out to purify the elements that make it separately, and then you bring it back together. And then it's in a more pure form. And then you separate it out again, purify those components again, and then bring it together. And the alchemical process happens over and over and over, which is why when you get to its most pure form is when that divine union can happen. Okay. That's why the runner chaser thing at the runner, it's the separate with the chaser. And then when the chaser stops chasing, they heal themselves. Then it could come back together. It's like, okay, it's better. But there's still problems. Separate. You work on your stuff. You work on your stuff. Bring it back together. And does this feel like a yo-yo experience? It really can. (laughs) I'm speaking from experience here. It really can. That's why this is not for everyone. It's really not. So if it's something where you are frustrated with it, Um, fighting yourself, fighting your guides, fighting your path, fighting your soul, you know, struggling with adjustments, just release the connection in its entirety. It doesn't mean you're putting it behind you. There's an advantage here. If you switch how you view this connection as a vehicle for change. And that's it. Because if it's going to come together for sacred union in this lifetime or not, it's going to happen. It's, it's, if it's supposed to, it's just going to. And you don't have to worry about the future. Because what it is you're going to choose is going to be something different. Okay. Because in the future here, when you each have to face this ice queen, okay, it, it's, it's the culmination of all you've learned. Okay, when it gets to the point where you have to face off, I know it feels like a video game, like at the end you have to defeat the boss kind of thing. Um, It's like working through this world and then finally getting to their lair and having to to defeat them on their home, with, with their own home court advantage. The masculine is going to struggle further. Okay. We have Capricorn energy there with the double Knight of Cups, okay, um, Knight of Pentacles. And this is the test to see if he's done the work, even after all this fighting with the self, with others, with guides, he could still get through that. He could stop running. But if it's showing up here as the devil and the Knight of Coins blocking the Knight of Cups, He's going to reach the critical point that is his test and stop. Okay. This this has been a very uncomfortable journey for him. Not saying it hasn't been for her. Not saying that. This has been two very different experiences. One is not better than the other. Okay. This one... The fear is greater than his heart space. Okay. I'll get a little bit more tarot on that, but he is he is stopping. Whereas she is embracing. King of Swords, Aquarian Energy, Empress, Card of Taurus, and Libra, Nine of Cups. She is embracing everything that she's learned. Okay. And she will be gifted. She will be gifted. A connection because she faces off with the ice queen and wins because she applies everything that she has learned in these stages okay okay let's get a little because she's gifted this king of swords and that's not who this is so i will go on to the extended to see who that is but let's get a little bit more with this twin with this masculine before we before we wish him well because that's really what she can do at this point right oh, show me the outcome 
of this devil energy after the nine of coins stops the heart space, please. Shit. <laughs> wow. Uh, Eight of Coins, um, Star Card of Aquarius, Death Card of Scorpio, Four of Wands, um, the Lover's Card of Gemini, uh, Sun, Leo, Energy, King of Swords. He will see you. He will see the one that got away. You, Twin Flame. Sun, Four of Wands, Lover's, Star. He will see this die off and you walk away with a King of Swords. See, your King of Swords came up twice for the feminine. He will be out in the cold. And he will see the lost opportunity. So you're, you're, this feminine is going to be the one that got away. In a big way. In a big way. Okay. 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 Oh, let's go for a happy ending. It looks like it's possibly very happy. <laughs> here with the Nine of Cups here. And a very thankful and gratitude filled Empress here. And he's got his sights set on her. So I'll head over to the extended and see what's going on with him. See if we can get more on who he is and how this connection is going to pan out. So I hope you guys got what you needed from this. I hope you were able to make peace with the things that were challenging. And um, I'll see you at the, in the extended. Bye. Mm -hmm.